What up world? Hello legend of life. This is Jen Legend. I say legend, but confidently legend. Humbly, nobody on a screen. Back and or introducing. I've got a long weekend ahead of me, and I figured I'd film some videos of what I do with work, rescue swimming, in my free time as an athlete and bike rider. Everything's a mess. If everything was perfect, or I, if I waited for the perfect moment to film, I would never film. Got my fingernails outgrown, my eyebrows outgrown, got food and random stuff on my bed, got all that stuff to square away. Got even more food on my desk, my helmet, with all my work gear, but it's all good. Life's always gonna be a mess, and like I said, there's no perfect time for anything, so just wanted to sit down and talk about what I got going on this weekend. Got short short work days, eight hours. That's short to us in this uh, industry that I'm in, the maritime industry, as a merchant marine engineer, coinciding with surface rescue swimming. And it's been a while since I've been in the pool, so that's the main reason why I wanted to spend this weekend, really, to try to get in the pool and get my training up and stuff. I've kept up with the fitness, physical, diet, I'm like five weeks into keto and it's not very fun. I'm like craving like donuts, pop tarts, apple turnovers, apple pies, ice cream, fruit loops, and it's killing me, but I always push through stuff like this and I don't really have a target date on when I'd stop. It's just whenever we get this ship going again, we got stuck out in Guam. So gonna have fun and try to get in the pool as much as possible. I've been kind of stalling on it for a little bit, but with the long weekend, I think I can get like a decent amount of hours in. Running has slowly gotten there. I'm not sure if it's really improving. I started running at the end of 2022, and we are halfway through 2024 now. Before I got into all that running, really, it really changed my life. Two years of, just about two years of running. I want to say before I started running, I was standing at 136 pounds, 32% body fat, thick. And then once I got through SAR training, well, mid SAR training, I was probably about 130, 24% body fat. Right now I'm standing at 125, 24% body fat. I don't know why I'm still 24% body fat despite seeing some changes between photos. But that's just what the in-body scan says. I'll probably take another one before I leave this area and see if keto and cardio has helped me out or not. I mean, I've really plateaued as an athlete over the years. I feel like I've done so much. Even even when I was at my peak weight and body fat, I was still athletic. Like everyone knew, anyone who ever had a conversation with me, interacted with me, knew that like I was so athletic. But it's plateaued over the years where it's like my body is very resistant to changes. And it's pretty hard. I mean, my goal, if I can drop below 20% body fat and get under close to 120, that'd be cool to see. But I haven't been that weight since like high school. High school, I was like leaving at 124. And I'm pretty much there right now. And I can tell I'm getting weaker because I can't push as much weight as I used to. And for me, that's not a big deal because my goal is not to really push weight. My, my goal is to really work on endurance cardiovascularly and just be able to do the jobs that I do. Doesn't really take too much, but some would say more than the normal, I'd say, but I can keep up and I've never really had an issue physically with work as an engineer, luckily. But if you know how to work the tools and stuff, you can always work smarter, not harder, as they said. So work, then getting off work, planning on hitting the pool, do some swimmy swims. We got some bike rides. Probably gonna shoot some clips of that. 
I mean, I've been able to spend a lot of time making a lot of short clips on TikTok and uh, posting them on Instagram Reel as well. Not really going anywhere with either, but I mean, nearly 1,400 followers on TikTok. That's quite an accomplishment, 1,400. Didn't think I'd get that far. Like, yeah, that's 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 a lot. I'm proud of myself. It's not a million or anything. Same thing with YouTube. Just only got a couple hundred people, but that's a lot of people because if I stuck a hundred people in this room right now, we'd probably all die, to be honest with you. Uh, a lot of my friends follow me. A lot of people that know me follow me on uh, Instagram, but they're not really showing a lot of love to the bike community. And that's most of the things I post on Instagram now. It's taken over my Instagram and TikTok, even though that's like not 100% everything I do. I also do fitness too. I've gotten a little bit more comfortable with talking by myself here because I've been journaling since the end of 2021, which I think has really done it for me and even more comfortable with myself. My main goal with this YouTube now, now that I'm thinking things a little bit more through, Despite having all my fun in both fitness and bike riding, I think what I really want to do is try to encourage people to empower themselves and understand that they can do a lot of things. Of course, having an extra hand helps and everything, but you can do a lot of things by yourself. You'd be surprised how much you can accomplish and stuff. I've gotten this far in life with the help that I got from external people and stuff, but, you know, I'm sick and tired of having this conversation about partnership and boyfriends and all that stuff and all the pressures of society getting under my nerves like I'm kind of tired of it I just want to do what I want to do I don't want to really wait on somebody to to get me to do it not really get me to do it but I also have grown to not really want to do things that people ask of me it's pretty much all my choice at this point and yeah I just came on to say I'm here to do whatever, and I'm here to show you guys that you can do whatever you want. You don't really need to wait and, you know, wait for peer pressure to get to you and stuff. And I don't like being pushed around either. Like, that's one thing I learned about myself when I went through OCS. I don't like following the, the guides of what they have laid out. I like doing my own thing, and I feel like I can push myself a little bit further, and I can cater to my needs better than the standard whatever guidelines whatever crazy uh, i just ran my first two hour run a couple days ago that was killer that was like the longest run of my life it was about 8.6 miles yeah i don't know i've been having a hard time sleeping the past week and i figured if i made myself extremely tired I would sleep a little bit longer. Didn't work. But yesterday I actually broke my short sleeping streak. I was sleeping like three, five hours the past week and it was bad because it was all due to uh, work schedule change and yeah, it was just hard to shake off. Just kept sleeping, waking up and just not being able to go back to sleep. I don't know if it was because of the change of diet either, but I haven't had carbs since April 20. I did have like a small sparkling juice just a little serving of it but that's about it that was for a barbecue and a friend really asked me to just enjoy it <laughs> and i was like all right fine whatever that's another thing too it's really hard to do what you want to do when you got other people around because they're all doing other stuff and i like that they keep me involved in everything but it's pretty tough because i'm trying to stay disciplined as much as possible and yeah, it's just really hard just having other people around. Be even being at home, I tried to keep my diet straight and try to keep the carbs low, especially in the States when everything is filled with sugar and stuff. I just, from the photos, I could tell I was bloated, just eating whatever, not really tracking anything. I have kept up with the fitness and minded the food and figured out that I've been able to basically de bloat myself or slim down. It feels like I slimmed down. I feel a lot better. Uh, it's kind of tough to get into the keto state, I would say. It takes a few weeks of commitment and really discipline and 
the first couple weeks I was just eating ground beef and eggs, classic. And now I'm trying to figure out more, more stuff so I don't break it, like these Propel electrolyte packets. It says no carbs, no sugars, but on the ingredients it does mention sugar, but I think it's just such a low amount. The main, first main ingredients are acid, salt, monopotassium, phosphate, so pretty easy stuff. I mean, I could also just throw some salt in my water for electrolytes. Some people do that. I've noticed a couple of the people I went to school with are starting to hop onto the social media and talk about fitness, and I think I can go that route just because I've been doing it for so long, and it's time that I spread my knowledge upon people. And now I'm just going to go off. It's like been 11 minutes now, but maybe it'll be a video for another time. Love this bag, fits everything. Feasting the goggles. Just gotta clean it up real quick. It's one way to keep it from fogging up in the swim. Squid time! Didn't get too much film swimming because they've asked me not to record. Even though I was pretty isolated, but that's not the point. They've asked me to not record, so respectfully, I had to put the camera away, and we'll just get going with this bike ride here. For Saturday swim, I swam 500 meters, and then 750 meters. There's supposed to be 800, but I don't know if I messed up or my watch messed up. And then Sunday, I swam 1600 meters, just to see if I could do it. And yeah, it was tiring. The thing about riding in Guam is you only have so many places to go and so many different routes you can take, so a lot of the film will be... I've had someone reach out to me about being a squid, and for those who don't know the term, squid is just riding without gear and being a complete idiot. I will say, Guam's probably a safer place to do that just because it's such a small island and most bikers don't really have a choice but to ride slowly and cars actually pay attention here. If I was back in the states where there was open freeways and the speed limit is what it is, I'd probably double up on gear and people back in the states don't pay attention as well either. I don't want to be able to speak on this because I've ridden in multiple cities and states. I'm talking about Boston, Massachusetts for one. Norfolk, Virginia, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Houston, Texas. And between Boston, Virginia, Virginia, and New York, and back. So I've dealt with a handful of different drivings and conditions and stuff, and I'll say it's definitely tougher in the States. There's just so much more. In Guam it's pretty simple, they're pretty relaxed here, they don't drive too fast, and bikes themselves can't drive fast for too long, because the area is just too short, and the roads are fairly curvy for the most part, so speed can only be done for so long before they run out of space and have to make a turn in it. They have to slow down, otherwise they're gonna wreck themselves. I'd like to mention that this is quite unusual for a merchant marine. I just got 
very lucky and fortunate enough to be able to pull this off and get my bike rides in. Always grateful for these bike rides. Memorial Day weekend was very kind and giving with the weather. The sun was out, it's pretty warm, the skies are blue, nice views. I'm gonna be closing the video with the next clip here. But I hope you guys enjoyed a little day in my life, I guess. And I had other things that went on this uh, weekend. Had a nice barbecue and uh, did a lot of exercising. So that's just what I do personally. And until next time, ride safe out there. Have a Memorial Day weekend.